So let's now bring in former assistant U.S. attorney David Weinstein. He is now with the Henshaw Law Firm. Good to see you, David. Thank you for coming on a Friday evening. You're welcome. Good to see you both this evening. So what does all this mean for individual one, which we now know is likely President Donald Trump? This is what he thinks. An hour ago, the president tweeting, quote, totally clears the president. Thank you. Does this clear him, or should he be losing a little bit of sleep over this? The sky is very blue in his world. He should be losing a lot of sleep over this. These pleadings that were filed today don't clear him in any way, shape, or form. In fact, they reiterate information that both Cohen has about specific conversations with individual one and about falsehoods that Manafort has brought forward concerning his involvement with certain people who we're connected to individual one. So what's the next step now in connecting the dots here? David. Well, Mueller continues to connect the dots. He continues to interview all of these people, including Kelly. Today, earlier, he spoke. We heard that he spoke with him about this. He's putting his pieces together. The more information he gets, the more inconsistent statements that people gave, and then the more corroboration he gets about the involvement of Individual One become more important for the investigation. Was Individual One's involvement before he was elected president? Mm -hmm. Was it after? And does it continue to this day? And whether or not what he's doing, is he obstructing any ongoing investigations? So prosecutors from the Southern District of New York say Cohen did try to criminally influence the outcome of the 2016 presidential election. So how does this tie into the president now? We know Michael Cohen was his personal attorney for years and uh, his so-called fixer. Well, if you and I wanted to go out and help influence an election, we'd knock on doors, we'd pick up the telephone, we'd call people, we'd tell them to come out to vote. What Cohen did, he went in and he bought off two individuals, paid them money in an effort to suppress their stories about relationships they had with the president at a time he was running for election. He then received money back through a back door as a campaign contribution reimbursement. That was his criminal penalty. Mm -hmm. And certainly, did the president know that's what he was doing? Uh, we can't say for sure. Cohen seems to elude the fact that he did this on his behalf. He was doing it as his friend, as his counsel. but. It influenced the election because certainly people had a differing opinion as to what this person was. From what we've seen so far, it seemed to indicate that Cohen was a lot more cooperative with the special counsel's office than he was with New York prosecutors. What do you make of that? Well, the cooperation he gave to the special counsel's office was very narrow in its focus. They asked him specific questions about specific areas. With the prosecutors in New York, they asked him a lot of questions about a lot of his criminal activity. Some of it he refused outright to cooperate with them about. And so they said you're either on board with us or not on board with us. So they're not going to give him credit. Again, the special counsel's office, very narrow set of questions. And those he all answered correctly. His uh, willingness to be forthcoming has definitely evolved throughout uh, these months. Um, so his lawyers are arguing that he should, you know, not get as much prison time. His sentence shouldn't be so severe because he did cooperate with the special counsel's office. If you're the judge, what do you say to that? I say you're making a mistake. You can often be too greedy when you ask for a sentence that's substantially lower than what's really deserved by your client in a situation. And this is a circumstance where he's not like Flynn. He's not like Papadopoulos. His guidelines overall are not zero to six months. His guidelines are in the four to five year range. And for his lawyers to suggest that with all the crimes he committed, as a lawyer, as someone who knows how the system works and who went behind it to influence it, that his sentence should be down to credit time served, which is essentially no time at all. When he's looking at four years, that judge is going to take a dim view of that, and he's going to end up doing a number of years inside a federal detention center. There is an additional filing about another key player in all of this, Paul Manafort. What do you make of that? Well, Manafort, in the same way that Cohen's lawyers thought that they would outsmart the judge and ask for crime time served, Manafort thought he could outsmart the special counsel's office and he could slide certain answers in, protect certain people. Special counsel's office had nothing to do with it. They saw right through those lies. They gave him an opportunity to undo what he did. He didn't do that and in fact he continued to tell lies and then pass information to the current administration. All of that backfired. His deal is now out the window, and he's going to be looking at a significant amount of time. Mm. So he took a very different approach than Michael Cohen. Uh, do you think this is because he's banking on a pardon? It certainly seems that way. Uh, you know, whether or not Cohen is banking on a pardon, we can't tell. But from the looks of it, Manafort sought to protect people who he knew had the power to protect him down the road. Yeah, and we also know that they talked to John Kelly, who apparently is on his way out as White House Chief of Staff. So we'll see where all of that goes as well. All right, thank you, David. Thank you. You're David. welcome.